Hi, I'm Larry G. So, um, when any branch of science, its practitioners, acolytes and dupes claim that the science is settled, rationally demands us to think, hang on, hang on, que bono, it is exactly at that point when it ceases to be science and when the application of true scientific thinking becomes a personal and collective responsibility. The scientific method is just that, a very powerful methodology that is at best rendered irrelevant and at worst dangerous when it is bereft of truly radical thinking. Not mindless single-issue extremism, but thought that has the purpose of getting to the true root causes of all things. Is climate change a reality? All evidence points to that conclusion. It always has been, and is one of the main drivers of biological evolution itself. Certainly, by far, the greatest component in natural environmental change, and significantly also the most rapid in its cycles in terms of geological time. Significantly, it is much more rapid in onset than purely genetic change can occur, as starkly seen in various mass extinctions, including the one currently in progress. Evolutionary biological records track the story of how entire biosphere adapts to those environmental changes, not just the adaptations and failures to adapt of any given species or genus. Mankind's evolutionary success to date, while based on a genome that is stable over tens of thousands of years, has almost solely been based on the ongoing evolution of consciousness and adaptive evolutionary choices, all related to highly effective behavioural adaptations, and the first of which was an ancient ancestral conscious choice that then led to an unnatural <coughs> and hugely beneficial biped, um, beneficial bipedalism and upright stance which set our species on the road to the top of the food chain. The next step was the adaptation of four legs and arms and hands and the final one was the development of the complex language, also a matter of conscious choice and effort. Our species somewhat outsized brain but more importantly the incomparable uh, complexity of our neocortex is the product not the cause of our amazing evolutionary success. It is ultimately that what makes us the most adaptable species imaginable. But only when that gift from our ancestors, all of them, is appropriately used for the benefit of the entire species, in balance with the rest of the biosphere and the shared environment. Adaptability, no matter how powerful its potential, is totally useless and irrelevant if it doesn't lead to ongoing and appropriate adaptation to any and all environmental change, regardless of the actual cause of the change. Inappropriate adaptation is as dangerous as no adaptation at all, and in some causes more so. The climate change bun fight that we're currently witnessing it falls squarely into the latter categories, not only in terms of wasted conscious adaptability, but also in terms of actual adaptations of which there is as yet little practical evidence, only paralyzing mass hysteria. The latter is exactly what the global elites want for the simple, cynical and devastatingly practical reason that it is not climate change that threatens nearly as much as our failure to respond either appropriately or adequately to its external ch eternal challenges, which in fact have been major shaping influences on who we are rather than the ex existential threat that is a populist common denominator. For now, my opinion is that CO2, anthropogenic or otherwise, whilst undoubtedly involved in the highly complex overall process, purely forms a mass energy perspective, apart from other compelling contrary evidence and rational theories, simply cannot be such a definitive factor as is made out. Moreover, by far the most important and influential greenhouse gas is water vapour, the role of which seems to simply have been written out of the script. Nonetheless, whether I and those who are sceptical are right or wrong, is, as explained above, totally irrelevant, as is the opposing case. The key issues for me are firstly our individual and coll collective failure in adaptive consciousness, and secondly, arising from the first, the masses' lack of appreciation that the present, and by the looks of it, future failure in behavioural adaptation is very likely to lead of its own accord to the achievement of clearly stated elitist aims of drastic global population reduction. With practical AI and associated robot, uh, robotics a reality, there is no longer a need for vast numbers of slaves of any kind. In this context, the climate hysteria also serves to buy time for the elites to transfer their coal and oil monopolies to renewables, conveniently financed by so-called carbon taxes paid by the masses. Not because they are necessarily as environmentally bad as is made out, they surely aren't wonderful, but because without access to affordable energy sources, sustainable 
or unsustainable, the masses will be unable to make the necessary adaptations to changing climates anyway. Just understand that. Monopolism and parasitism, which nearly always ends in the host's death. The most successful parasites are those which are able to successfully transfer to a new viable host before or shortly after the current host dies. This reflects perfectly in the rise in and inevitable fall of all civilized societies. Where the elitists, in their own ignorant arrogance, may very well see their own arses, is the overlooked fact of our species' dangerous lack of genetic diversity. Large populations and wide genetic diversity are essential factors in adapting to and fighting newly evolved pathogenic organisms, which are evolving all the time at a far greater rate than multicell creatures can evolve genetically. So there is a distinct possibility that if such massive human population reductions are achieved, then the elites will not be long in following the masses into extinction as a result of an inability to deal with their new diseases. It is quite simple. Adapt appropriately and timiously or die. I'm the OBG. There's a man who contradicts way is it type of guy to you There's no first place But he's part of a race Race Eyes lie But take a look inside They mirror the sights you'll see